subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act Welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Pulwama attack a success story of Imran Khan government says Pakistani minister in parliament. Pakistan stays in grey list of FATF. And Kabul rocked by consecutive terror attacks. Viewers, in today's episode, we will first begin by showing a video that tells all about Pakistan government's nefarious nexus with the dreaded terrorist groups. The puppet Imran Khan government, in association with the terrorists, plans terror attacks against India and then goes on to deny it until its own ministers come out in public to expose their evil terror designs. Have a look. पुलवामा में जो हमारी कामयाबी है वो इमरान खान की क्यादत में इस कौम की कामयाबी है उसके हिस्सेदार आप भी सब हैं, उसके हिस्सेदार हम भी सब हैं। This man boasting about Pulwama terror attack in the Pakistani parliament is none other than Pakistan's Minister of Science and Technology, Fawad Chaudhry. On October 29. This Pakistani federal minister admitted to Imran Khan government's role in carrying out the 2019 deadly Pulwama attack that martyred 40 Indian CRPF personnel. Experts believe that such statements coming from a cabinet minister shows the deep involvement of Pakistani top leadership into the acts of terrorism. The statement is from a very senior Pakistani leader. It's from one of the ministers and it's a statement that the minister makes on the floor of the Pakistani Legislative Assembly. I'm sure he knew that he was hooked on to the global television from there. And he made a very candid statement that one should give the credit to Prime Minister Imran Khan for the attack in Pulbama uh, where we lost 40 of our people. Obviously, uh, there can be no more uh, candid, I would say, a statement of facts than what the minister has come out with. I only wish this had uh, been stated a couple of days earlier when the Financial Action Task Force was evaluating Pakistan's case for, well, they are being uh, sunk a little deeper in the black hole, in the blacklist. Uh, had this kind of a evidence been available from a top leadership of the Pakistan, perhaps it would have made a difference to the Financial Action Task Force final judgment. Chaudhry, a close aide of Prime Minister Imran Khan, gave the remarks a day after Ayaz Sadiq, an opposition leader in Pakistan, made revelations about an important meeting held in Pakistan on February 27, 2019. In the Pakistani National Assembly, the opposition leader informed about the Pakistani Foreign Minister's shaky state as he pleaded the Pakistan Army to release the Indian Air Force Wing Commander Abhinandan Vartaman who was captured following the donning of his jet in a dogfight along LOC. What do you think about Abhinandan? I remember that Shah Mahmood Qureshi was in that meeting in which Prime Minister Sahib had to come to come and bring the Chief of Army Staff to come. They were sitting on the ground, they were sitting on the ground, and they were sitting on the ground. Shah Mahmood Sahib said, Foreign Minister Sahib said, कि खुदा का वास्ता है अब इसको वापस जाने दें क्योंकि 9 बजे रात को हिंदुस्तान पाकिस्तान पे अटैक कर रहा है। Taking cognizance of the recent statements passed in the Pakistani Parliament, 
Indian Foreign Ministry called out Pakistan for having launched heinous attacks against India. The whole world knows the truth about Pakistan's role in supporting terrorism. No amount of denial can hide this truth. Even their own leaders have time and again spoken about their role with regard to terrorism. The country which provides shelter to the maximum number of UN proscribed terrorists should not even attempt to play victim. Despite several revelations and condemnation, Islamabad does not stop its deplorable terror activities in Jammu and Kashmir. In the latest incident, three political workers, Fida Hussain, Umair Hajam and Umair Rashid Beg, were shot by terrorists in Gulgam district on 29 October. The Resistance Front, which is believed to be a shadow group of the lashkar e taiba has claimed responsibility for the killings. Let's now focus on terror funding by the states that causes a worry for the world peace. In South Asia, Pakistan remains the hub of terror activities as many outfits based here are funded by the state and its spy agencies to create instability in the region. Despite remaining in grey list of Financial Action Task Force for many months, Pakistan has failed to comply with 27-point action plan. We have a report. Pakistan remains on our increased monitoring list, the so-called grey list. And with this, for the fourth consecutive time, Pakistan remained in the grey list of the Financial Action Task Force. The FATF plenary, which was recently held virtually, noted that Pakistan has not complied with six major points of the 27-point action plan given to it. Urging Islamabad to effectively act against terror funding modules the Global Terror Financing Watchdog has given it a final deadline of February 2021 to fully implement the action plan. We urge Pakistan to complete all items until the next plenary meeting in February. The six outstanding items are very serious uh, uh, deficiencies um, that still have to be repaired. And uh, for that reason, um, the risks are not, uh, has not, have not gone. Uh, the Pakistan government uh, must do its best um, to repair and to work on these uh, outstanding six items. UN designated terrorists like Jashi Muhammad Chief Masood Azhar, Lashkar e Taiba founder Hafiz Said, and the outfit's operational commander Zakir Rahman Lakhvi are freely operating in Pakistan as the country has not taken action against any of these perpetrators. In fact, a sudden disappearance of the names of more than 4,000 terrorists from its original list of 7,600 under Schedule 4 of its Anti-Terrorism Act has raised several questions on the country's so-called counter-terrorism measures. Azhar Said and Lakhvi are the most wanted terrorists in India for their involvement in numerous terrorist acts, including 26-11 Mumbai terror attacks and the bombing of a CRPF bus in Jammu and Kashmir, Pulwama last year. The Financial Action Task Force grey listing of Pakistan was more than expected. In the previous sessions, the FATF had identified that Pakistan had to take action on 27 issues to get rid of the black mark or the grey listing mark. However, Pakistan completed only 21 of them. Importantly, the six ones which were not completed were the major ones that related to the actions to be taken against terrorists who have been internationally listed, such as Hafiz Saeed and others. Pakistan is teaming with several terror groups. Jashi Muhammad, lashkar e taiba Hezbollah Mujahideen, lashkar e Jangvi, Al-Badr, Al-Barq, Harkatul Ansar, Harkatul Mujahideen. The tehrik e nafaz shariat e Muhammadi are just few names out of 100 others which are regularly being funded by the notorious inter-service intelligence or the ISI to operate comfortably in the South Asian region. These terrorist groups change their names and pretend to be charity organizations to receive money from various sources. Falahi Insaniyat Foundation is a so-called charity organization of Jamaat Dawa, a terrorist outfit run by Hafiz Said. This foundation exploits the humanitarian crisis in Pakistan and uses its welfare services to convince young people 
to join its ranks and raise funds in the name of various social programs like educational workshops. Similarly, Jaish Muhammad, the terror group responsible for the 2019 Pulwama attack, runs like a business enterprise in Pakistan. Its banners seek donations in the name of slain terrorists. Despite repeated warnings, Pakistan has miserably failed in putting curbs on these activities and hence it helplessly embarrasses itself in every plenary of the FATF. These terrorist organizations, Laskari Toba, HM and uh, uh, JM, JM, Akani Network, are Pakistan military and ISI, they, they treat it as assets. So how can you destroy that asset, your assets? You cannot. Those are your assets. So in Pakistan calculation, the, these are terrorist organizations are their asset. So it, I can guarantee you, Pakistan will never, never touch the terrorist or terrorist organization. Because Pakistan uses them as a weapon against India. In 2019, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan had publicly confessed that there are about 30 to 40,000 terrorists currently operating in the country. In order to get out of the grey list, Pakistan needs to take credible and irreversible action against these dreaded terrorists. Pakistan was placed on the grey list by the FATF in June 2018 and was given a plan of action to complete it by October 2019. Since then, the country continues to be in that list due to its failure to comply with the FATF mandates. FATF's next plenary is scheduled to be held in February next year. Amid intra-Afghan talks in Doha, the violence continues unabated in parts of Afghanistan. Incidents of bomb blast and fierce gun battles between the Afghan special forces and the Taliban deteriorates the living conditions in the war-torn nation. A UN report has suggested that nearly 6,000 Afghan civilians have lost their lives in terror-related violence in the past one year. The report comes following three deadly blasts in separate provinces of the country. These visuals speak of the severity of the damage Afghanistan has faced in the past two decades. Countless lives have been lost, but the situation here remains tragic and grim. A latest report released by the UN Assistance Mission in Afghanistan says that in the first nine months of 2020, at least 2,117 civilians have died in the fighting, whereas 3,882 were wounded. The report comes amid a rise in violence in Afghanistan. At least three bomb blasts were reported in just one week in different parts of the country. On October 24, a suicide bombing at an education center in Kabul killed at least 18 people and wounded dozens. The attack was claimed by the Islamic State that specifically targets the minority Shia community. The capital city was hit by another bomb blast on October 27 when a car packed with explosives was detonated near the Interior Ministry. The attack took place amid heavy fighting between the government forces and Taliban insurgents. The violent explosion also caused varying degrees of damage to nearby buildings. Deadly car bombings took place in the southeastern province of Khost, killing at least five special forces members and wounding around 34 people. Khost province is home to active Taliban insurgents and also Al-Qaeda fighters. The attack in the city bordering Pakistan was led by three suicide bombers who detonated their explosive loaded vehicles targeting the special forces.
The security situation remains grim in Afghanistan, despite efforts by the Afghan government and the United States to bring the Taliban to the negotiating table. Pakistan is being called out globally for providing safe havens to terror groups. In the recently held 2 plus 2 dialogue between India and the United States, U.S. Secretary of State and Defense Secretary and their Indian counterparts condemned Islamabad for using terrorist proxies and asked the state to take sustainable and irreversible action against cross-border terrorism. We bring you the details. India and the United States consistently remain at the target of radical Islamic terrorism emanating from Pakistan. The fight against terrorism is ongoing for the past many years, but Pakistan has hardly done anything to eliminate it. The issue of cross-border terrorism came up in the third edition of the US-India 2 plus 2 dialogues. Indian External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar and the Defence Minister Rajnath Singh hosted their American counterparts Mike Pompeo and Mark Esper for the highest level dialogue in New Delhi. In the joint statement issued after the meeting, both the countries strongly condemned cross-border terrorism in all its forms. Emphasizing upon the need for concerted action against all terrorist networks, both the nations asked Pakistan to take immediate, sustained and irreversible action to ensure that no territory under its control is used for launching terror attacks. In the talks, the leaders also discussed their shared interest in promoting a sovereign, peaceful, united, democratic, inclusive, stable and secure Afghanistan including support for an Afghan-led and Afghan-owned peace process. We make clear that cross-border terrorism is completely unacceptable. On Afghanistan, India's stakes in its security and stability are evident, as is our willingness to contribute to international efforts to that end. India is a victim of Pakistan-sponsored terrorism. Be it 2008 Mumbai attacks or attack on Pathan Court Air Base, a conspiracy was hatched by Pakistan by using its terror proxies to hurt peace, tranquility and democracy in India. Similarly, the United States also witnessed 9-11, a series of four coordinated terrorist attacks by the Islamic terrorist group Al-Qaeda in 2001. Therefore, India and the US are standing firmly on their democratic values, warning Islamabad to expeditiously bring to justice the perpetrators of such attacks. India has been the target of terrorism emanating from Pakistan since 1980s. And America directly has been the target of terrorism after 9-11 and uh, 2001. Since then, Pakistan has been promising both India and uh, US and the world that it will take action against terrorism, financing, training, sanctuary. But it has not done anything. The U.S. State Department's Pakistan report on terrorism 2019 had said that it allowed groups targeting Afghanistan, including the Afghan Taliban and affiliated Haqqani network, as well as groups targeting India, including LET and its affiliated front organizations and Jesh Muhammad, to operate from its territory. Pakistan is a rogue state. It is a shameless state. Its, it's uh, uh, entire uh, strategy is uh, controlled not by the civilian government, but by the Pakistani army and ISI. And they continue to shelter terrorism. They continue to harbor terrorism. They continue to enable financing of terrorism as it has been shown in the Financial Action Task Force. 
India and the United States, two of the largest democracies across the world, have seen the worst side of violence when it comes to facing the wrath of radical Islamic terrorism. Post 9-11 and 26-11 terror attacks, the two sides have been broadly involved in discussing strategies to put pressure on Pakistan for launching effective counter-terrorism measures. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.anin.com. I'm Yeshi Chonsom signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.